So I grew up in Miami. That's the 305 area code. And I grew up loving music, hearing the best DJs on the radio. So I would say that dancing has always been in my blood. My name is Sadie Kurzban. I'm the founder of 305 Fitness. Looking back on January and February of 2020, we had close to 300 instructors and DJs. We were running about 100 classes a week out of each studio. And COVID-19 threw us for a big loop. I was just having to face, what does this business look like when we don't have the sales coming in? We have never really had an eye for digital. But I know as an entrepreneur that the only way to really know if something's going to work is just to get out there and try it. I logged into YouTube. I said, I'm going live. We promoted it across social media. Welcome to 305 Fitness. We had over a thousand people show up. <laughs> Though about 50% of our members put their membership on pause, we do have another 50% paying that monthly fee just because they love that we're making all of this content available online for them. We got Denise. Hey, Denise Coral. And we're also using Google My Business to update our studio listings so that just in case customers are checking there to see when we're going to reopen, we can redirect them to our YouTube channel. Once everything does reopen, we probably will continue to live stream our classes because we want to remain really nimble. I absolutely love my business. What gets me out of bed every day is just wanting to know that 305 has another day at success. Good morning, good morning. My name is Rebecca Prozan and I'm a Senior Manager of Government Affairs and Public Policy at Google. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Grow with Google is Google's economic opportunity initiative, building on the company's 20 year history of building products, platforms, and services that help people and businesses grow. Since 2017, Grow with Google has trained more than 5 million people across the United States on how to use digital tools. For small businesses, digital skills are more critical than ever, with nearly one in three small business owners saying that without digital tools, they would have to have closed all or part of their business as a result of the COVID-19 economic crisis. Additionally, over 80% of small business owners are interested in learning more about how to use digital tools to help move their businesses forward. We're so pleased to be partnering with the California Office of the Small Business Advocate and the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development and my friend, Mayor Garcetti, to be hosting this virtual workshop series. Before we kick off our workshop today and bring up our trainer, Israel, I'd like to introduce one of our co-hosts for the event, Isabel Guzman, the director of the California Office of Small Business Advocate. Please join me in welcoming Isabel. Isabel. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and the entire Google team for partnering with us to help small businesses get digital. Welcome to our Get Digital California Grow with Google workshop series, everyone. It is incredibly inspiring to see so many small business owners joining us for this special workshop to become small business savvy YouTubers, learning from experts how this powerful platform to grow your business can be implemented. I'm Isabel Guzman. As it was said, I'm the director of the Office of the Small Business Advocate at GoBiz within the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. I serve as the voice of small business and startups in California. I've been a small business owner myself and grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. So I've seen firsthand that constant innovation in your business pays off and my office is committed to supporting you. My incredible team focuses every day on providing information and assistance to help entrepreneurs better access all the resources available to them. We are the voice and advocate to access capital and the markets and we focus on resilience, so critical today in the COVID-19 marketplace that we're in. That means helping small businesses adopt technology. And we know that getting digital can help you build your long-term success as well. In surveys, a third of businesses said they wouldn't have survived without adopting new digital tools. And with consumers more online than on main streets these days, US e-commerce sales are on trend to double to a trillion by 2023. And so we are so fortunate to have you all here today to learn about uh, this great product, YouTube, but also fortunate as we have another strong leader in California, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. 
Through his tenure as mayor of LA, he has continuously been innovative, finding ways to support economic and small business development strategies to retain LA's leadership in manufacturing, film, fashion, clean transportation, among others. During COVID-19, he has rolled out multiple economic relief packages for small businesses, no fee microloans and grants, and provides business source centers to advise small businesses. We are pleased to have the mayor with us kick off to today to kick off the digital workshop. Mayor Garcetti. Thank you so much, Isabel, for inviting me uh, to be here today. And thank you to the governor and the governor's office of business uh, and economic development for working so diligently to provide resources to our small businesses that are really the lifeblood of the Golden State and such an important engine of the American economy. And let me thank my friend Rebecca and Google for their continuous partnership over the years on so many things, including in such an important year, um, the establishment of a civil and human rights department for the first time in the city of Los Angeles and your expertise and philanthropic efforts have been so important now more than ever. You know, this is a moment we can't miss. It's a moment we have to meet. I'm actually in Salt Lake City right now, and tonight I'll be watching the vice presidential debate, and I'm not making any partisan points uh, on this Google call, but it is a moment in which I recognize that this next two years will probably be the defining two years of our life in America and in many places of the world. It's a unique time, too, in which we've been separated in three dimensions from our friends and our family, our coworkers, our communities, and yet, we've also been drawn closer together in so many ways, whether it's the speed of being able to have video conferences like this, or whether it's the way that we all recognize what's important as we stay at home uh, with our loved ones or figure out ways to help our neighbors. And I think it's going to take all of us coming together um, in a way that maybe we got lazy about doing for a few years. Um, states and counties and cities who now have to work together with our federal government to save a pandemic, we'll have to rebuild an economy together. Nonprofits and for-profits and government who are all enterprises of one sort or another, but who can share everything from racial justice uh, to more streamlined ways uh, to work and to work from diverse environments, as well as neighbors who maybe didn't know each other before this, but who now through the suffering of this year have had to come together, but we can work together to mend our lives as well. In the city of LA, we've done everything. I'm the grandson of two small business uh, owners, a barber and a tailor. I wouldn't be here today were it not for the opportunities that they built, the hard work of my grandparents um, that came before me. And it was with that in mind that immediately when this crisis hit, we did everything in the city we can't, could. With the limited dollars we had in the toughest budget year of our life, uh, by advocating at the federal level for the CARES Act and direct aid to cities to be able to put money into the hands of our small business owners, uh, whether it was laws um, that, uh, for instance, our commercial eviction moratorium or the $40 million that we put into an LA recovery relief fund, or whether it's just by using the lack of red tape by giving free permits to restaurants and saying you can take over our streets and sidewalks, put tables and chairs out there um, and helping do things like capping fees for third party delivery providers. All of these things are about keeping people alive today so that their livelihoods can survive tomorrow. And I really wanna thank also city departments. And I know for a lot of people, you look at your local city department as probably an impediment to what you wanna do, but they're finding ways to uncover uh, how to support businesses, to be creative kind of co-creators, co-writers of this next chapter of our history in order to move our economy forward as quickly as possible. And I do think that we've also learned just how many small businesses are vulnerable. They don't have the banking relationships to get a PPP loan. A PPP loan wasn't written for every kind of small business. Um, we have to look at those especially vulnerable industries and you know, restaurants, hospitality, uh, entertainment that are the lifeblood of a creative economy like Los Angeles as well. And also look with a racial and a gender lens at who's hardest hit. When you see a you know, sixth of businesses um, that have gone under, but when you look at African-American owned businesses and women owned businesses and Latino owned businesses and immigrant owned businesses, those numbers are much higher. Um, and we see that large divide between large and small businesses, a 32% increase in retail sales in the second quarter of this year, but many small businesses don't feel that and don't have the technical skills, which is what really today is about. So many businesses that I know who didn't even know how to put you know, a square onto their uh, cell phone to be able to do contactless delivery or curbside uh, service. 
those things where we're looking at, can we train a workforce to go out there, young people who are tech, technologically savvy and go into main streets in South LA and Northeast Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley and figure out with immigrant entrepreneurs and first time business owners, how they can get that website that they need, that e-commerce that they need, that contactless transaction technology and help them almost as a kind of cares core dealing not only with the public health issues of this moment, but the economic health of this issues. And that's why the tools that Google and YouTube provide can be so important in this arsenal. It's why in Los Angeles, we continue to work in partnership with the private sector to provide that sort of technical support and services to small businesses. In fact, last week, I was really pleased to be part of, during e-commerce week, an open for business partnership with Ritual that'll provide small business support leading up into the holidays. It provides struggling restaurants, as well as other food and beverage businesses that offer takeout and dine-in or pickup with ability to have individually branded online order menus for takeout delivery. So they can drive online sales to their existing websites, convert posts to purchases by integrating some of their online ordering through social media channels or buy directly from social media, grow customer loyalty um, from option or customer loyalty programs, and do contactless delivery through QR codes, as well as having the option of, of hiring their own staff to make deliveries so that those margins return to them instead of going out the door. So to remove barriers from entry, businesses are actually gonna be set up through this program for free, charge 0% credit card processing fees and zero monthly service fees through the end of the year. And to further assist marginalized businesses with highest needs, this partnership extends this $0 monthly fee for 250 Los Angeles City businesses to the end of next year in 2021. And that's just one example of how we can be creative and bring all these parties and all these tools and all this technology, and most of all, all this love and caring forward. Because we're positioning our businesses to be actually stronger and more resilient when they come out of this. These aren't just survival tools. These are thriving tools uh, that can come you know, for the next years uh, to come, the next decade to come. So from LA to all of you across California, let's continue to drive this journey. Let's continue to break down those barriers. Let's continue to find each other. Let's continue to copy each other. Let's find those best practices. Let's find those giant hearts. Let's breathe some hope back into a moment that I know feels dark because I, I can see those rays of sunshine beginning to break through the clouds. And I know that together we will march through this fog and get to a better day, a brighter day, a more prosperous and just day for everyone. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for the honor of inviting me. Back to you, Isabel. Thank you again, Mary Garcetti, for joining Small Businesses this morning across California and for your leadership. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you. During COVID-19, the state of California has expanded recovery loan programs, investing $125 million to help those who did not access PPP or get enough. We've committed $100 million in Main Street hiring credits, distributed free PPE to small businesses, and worked to ensure that entrepreneurs like you have a strongly supported network of small business centers with experts and advisors to help you start up, manage, and grow. We are here for you and committed to helping you through this pandemic. So it's my pleasure to introduce a surprise guest video this morning. Governor Gavin Newsom has pre-recorded a special short message for all of you business owners here with us today. Hey everybody, it's Governor Gavin Newsom and I just want to express deep appreciation for Google uh, and my team at GoBiz for bringing folks together to talk about the spirit that defines the greatness of our state and that's the spirit of entrepreneurialism. Uh, that dream that is alive in so many of us to live our lives out loud, to take pen to paper and take an idea and go out there and make a go out of it. It's what makes California special. It's what makes California so unique. Nobody does it better than the state of California. But that said, a lot of small businessmen and women have been challenged in these extraordinary times. And that's why it's important for each and every one of us to you know, step up our own game, to take time to learn about new innovative strategies, to lean in to the world we're living in uh, and help get that support uh, that all of us need as small uh, businessmen and women. I come from a private sector background. I come from a small business background. I took that pen to paper and opened a little wine store in San Francisco. One part-time employee grew it to about 20 plus businesses all up and down the state of California. I don't say that to impress any of you, but to impress upon you my passion uh, for small businesses, my passion for entrepreneurs. So I just want to express, uh, again, respect, appreciation uh, to all of you that are out there making a go of it. Uh, and again, to thank the team at GoBiz and the extraordinary talent at Google uh, for helping sharpening our skills and allowing everybody a peek into the future 
uh, and taking advantage of the skills and the lessons we can learn, the insights uh, in this virtual course. Take care, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to Governor Newsom's office, Mayor Garcetti's office, and to the Office of the Small Business Advocate. I'm Carissa St. Laurent. I'm your trainer today to talk to you about how to use YouTube to grow your business. I've been a small business owner most of my life. I actually started my first company in the city of Los Angeles back in the year 2001 and had an incredible uh, felt feeling of support and, uh, and time running a business in that city. I went on to work for Constant Contact, a small business marketing platform, and became a strong advocate for small businesses as a director of regional development. And now as a speaker and trainer for Grow With Google, I get to continue my work in supporting small businesses, helping them grow, and teaching them the tools, the strategies, and the tactics that they need to succeed. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about how you can succeed using YouTube to grow your business. For any of you interested in posting to social media throughout the day or throughout the presentation, feel free to use the hashtag GrowWithGoogle and hashtag GetDigitalCA. If you want to learn more about the Grow With Google program, please visit the website at google.com slash grow. We're talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is video marketing. And if we are talking about video marketing, we've got to talk about YouTube. YouTube is where people are signing in, clicking on videos, watching videos, and tuning into the content that they're interested in. YouTube has over a billion or two billion monthly logged in users watching over a billion hours of video per day. Now that's a ton of viewing, a ton of content. Today we're gonna talk about how you can get involved in that and leverage YouTube for your own business. YouTube is also where people discover new content. It's the number two search engine in the world after Google. So you can imagine people are going there and discovering things that they wanna learn, that they're interested in finding out about, and that could be you and your business. 68% of YouTube users have watched YouTube to help make a purchase decision. 90% of people say that they've discovered new products and services on YouTube. This is a great place for you as a small business to get in and get discovered by the people that you reach and that are your customers. YouTube is also where people engage. It's a social media platform, although most people don't think about it that way. People can engage with your videos, engage with you as the video creator on YouTube and uh, communicate with you through your channel and through each of your individual videos. People go to YouTube to find the information that they're looking for, engage with the content that they're interested in, and then potentially engage with you. So we're gonna talk all today about how to do this for your business, to make sure that you're successful in creating a home for your business on YouTube through the uh, creating a YouTube channel. We're also gonna talk about how to create videos that look great, that act great, that serve your business needs and reach your customers. We'll talk about how to organize your channel so you can attract your specific viewers and the people you're trying to reach, as well as how to promote your business with video. And then of course, talk lastly about the newest, which is of course, live streaming and doing YouTube lives. At the end, I'll share some more resources for you. As we go along, please do drop your questions in the Q&A chat area. There's uh, Googlers on hand to answer those questions and then I'll be able to take some questions at the end as well. So let's dive in, shall we, and talk about how to create a home for your business on YouTube by creating a YouTube channel. Creating a YouTube channel means you do need to have a Google account. You can create a free Google account, and once you do, you can sign in to YouTube from that Google account. Creating your channel means that you are creating this home for all of your videos on YouTube and a place for you to invite people to check out all of your content. To create a channel, you just sign into YouTube and click on the button that says create a channel. From here, you're going to add in some graphics. You want to add in a profile picture. 
with a business that uh, is a business that operates as a DBA, you have a business name, then it's most uh, best practice to use your logo here in this profile picture area. But if you are your business like I am as a professional speaker and trainer and coach, I use my actual photo of me in this area within your channel you're also going to want to describe what it is to people now just because you have a channel doesn't mean that people know what you're going to share there so the description area of your channel allows you to write a channel description that tells people what your videos are about why they should tune in and in a compelling way you can also in this area or this step and stage of the process add a url for your own website as well as social links then you're gonna go and customize your channel by adding channel art. The channel art area is a banner that shows up on your YouTube channel. This banner will look slightly different whether you're viewing your YouTube channel from the desktop computer or a mobile device or even from a connected TV. The channel art does need to be added with specific dimensions. You can, and I highly urge you to check out the free graphic design program, program canva.com, to just pick an already uh, designed template and then add in your artwork there. Once you've got that artwork, you can pop it right into your YouTube channel and it will look beautiful whatever view you're looking at it on. You can also organize the videos on your channel by adding sections. You can add up to 10 sections on your YouTube channel, and these sections may be divisions of your videos based on the categories that they are, uh, divided by themes potentially, and whatever sections and whatever uh, are meaningful divisions for you. Also, you'll notice on your YouTube account the upload or go live button that looks like a video camera with a plus symbol. Here, uh, when you are ready to upload and go live, that's what where you'll click in order to do that. But let's talk about more about uh, actually customizing your channel. Once you've got that beautiful channel art, you've got that profile picture, the description, you may want to add a channel trailer. The channel trailer is like a movie trailer a preview to your YouTube channel. You can add in a custom channel trailer here. That's a video of you talking about what your channel's about and encouraging people to check out your videos and to subscribe. Now that we've talked about how to create and customize your channel. Let's talk about the meat of your channel, which are the videos that you're going to create to help you achieve your business goals. A lot of people, when they think about videos, they get a little scared. And I know you as small business owners may have felt like me uh, a decade or so ago when I was thinking about creating videos. Like, don't I need a, a big team to help? And don't I need fancy and expensive equipment? The answer is no. If you have a smartphone, you've got a powerful HD camera built in that you can use for your videos. Now you may want to invest if you plan to do a ton of videos. You may want to invest in some more expensive video camera equipment, but you don't have to. You can absolutely start here with just using a smartphone device. But what I will tell you are some tricks and tips that directors and people who actually produce commercials and videos will do in order to create polished videos for your business. So first thing you need to do is to create a video concept. What is your video going to be about? What story do you want to tell? You may want to think about who's going to star in your video. It may be you as the business owner, or it may be someone on your staff, a customer, or maybe the star is one of your products. Whoever the star of the video is going to be, you're going to create the concept of the video around that star. Then, of course, within this concept, you want to think about how you're going to best capture the sights and sounds of that star. Think about the scenes and which scenes you uh, and the places you wish to have your video and where you wish to capture the, the story and the message that you want to share. And then, of course, once you've shot everything, you need to figure out how you're going to best edit the video. 
when it comes to editing, the uh, YouTube does have a YouTube studio that allows you to edit, uh, do simple editing to videos, but you can also, of course, use any of the third-party editing software that's out there to do great editing after you shoot. Before you shoot, however, you should write a script. And a script is just a simple outline. Even if you don't have a lot of dialogue, it's good to outline what you plan to shoot. So you've got the concept down, okay, the main idea around what your video is. And then you create an outline for each shot. First, think about what's my message in this video? What am I going to share that I want people to really remember and know? The first part of the video, that first five to 15 seconds, is the hook. From You want to create a strong impression in that first five to 15 seconds to get, compel people to continue watching, to compel them to want to stay on and get the rest of the information you plan to share. Now, great hooks could be you um, you know, sharing an interesting fact or funny, uh, funny uh, point. It might be the person or the star of the video is the hook. Or it could be that you are uh, setting up a, a question or a problem that people have and saying, you know, do you want to hear the answer? Stick around. Here's what's coming up. These hooks are important to include in the first five to 15 seconds so that you can compel people to stick around for that very important call to action or timely offer that you'll have in your video in order to move your business forward. Now, not every single video has a call to action that is by now, but you can have a call to action that steers the conversation in whichever way you wish, whether that's for them to simply subscribe to your YouTube channel, or maybe your call to action is going to be to uh, like the, the video, or you want them to click a link and visit your website. Whatever way you wish to steer them you can throughout the video and then certainly at the end once you've created that strong outline and script you got to get down to business of shooting the actual video although you may not have a big team and expensive equipment you still want to think about the setting and that setting includes the space the lighting and the sound the space needs to be clear of clutter and also convey the look and feel you wish to have in your video. Let's say you created a video outline that has five different scenes you plan to then splice together into one final video. Each of those scenes may be done in a different space. You need to make sure all of those spaces uh, look and feel like uh, and are connected so that they are visually connected and create a a nice flow between those scenes if you're going to show your logo or your workplace think about doing it in a subtle way where maybe your logo is on a coffee mug on the corner of your desk if you plan to shoot uh, with you sitting down talking from your desk now, when it comes to video, lighting is super important, but it doesn't mean you need to have big, expensive lights. I remember once when I was in Los Angeles and working for Constant Contact, I went onto the commercial set for one of their videos, and I walked into this huge, blinding light. It was like the, they had captured the sun. It was so hot. It was so massive, creating this you know, beautiful, natural daylight in this warehouse where they were shooting. But you don't need to have something like that. You can simply use natural light. Diffused or indirect natural light is one of the best sources of light for your videos. As long as the source of is the person who's starring in the video is facing that light, they're going to get a great natural and even cast of light on their face. Now, you do want to look for shadows and make sure that you are cutting any of those shadows out by potentially shining light on the area where there's shadow. For me, if I'm ever shooting a video just sitting at my desk, I'll use natural light coming through my window that's indirect, and then I'll also use a lamp, and I'll just shine that lamp towards my white wall, and then that white wall light, that diffused lamp light, bounces back onto my face. There are simple ways to do it, and if you want to invest in a little bit of equipment, it's not that expensive to get a ring light that you may use as well. Now, when it comes to sound, that's also important because videos are usually both video, uh, you know, a visual and also an audio. 
make sure that you listen to the spaces that you plan to shoot in and that you're not surprised by some unexpected train that's going to go by or overhead uh, flight path or something that may get in the way of you getting clean sound. If you plan to shoot from your either your mobile device or even a, a, a tablet or your computer, you may want to attach an external microphone to capture the sound better than the, the microphone that's built into the device. Lastly, when it comes to the star of the video, whoever is going to be speaking at different times or throughout the whole video, make sure that they get some lessons in speaking confidently clearly and using the right tone that you wish to carry through the video. Now that we've talked about how to create your channel and customize it to create awesome videos that are going to help propel your business forward, let's talk about how to organize your channel to attract the viewers, your target customers that you wish to watch. Here's an example of a really well organized channel. Divas Can Cook offers new videos every Thursday. You see that smack dab in the middle of her channel art. She's also got a video trailer which talks about her channel. And those trailers, by the way, are only seen by people who are unsubscribed to the channel. So if you do become a subscriber to Divas Can Cook, you don't see this channel trailer every single time. You also have the description area of the channel and then videos that are grouped in these playlists, which are just one of the types of sections that you can create on your channel. When you are done creating that channel and you've got a beautiful home for your videos, it's time to upload. Open up YouTube's, your YouTube account and go to YouTube Studio to upload your video. You'll click on create, which is the camera icon in the upper right hand screen of YouTube Studio. You'll then select the file that you wish to upload. From there, you're gonna add in all your video details. Here, you want to make sure that you're describing the video in a way that utilizes keywords and keyword phrases that your viewers, the people that you want to see these videos, would use to search for and find these videos. For example, in this title, it says how to make a three-tier wedding cake. How-tos are one of the most highly searched types of videos in YouTube. And when the, in, within the description, it also says in the first line, how to make a three-tier wedding cake, and then it continues on with that description. Using keywords and keyword phrases, throughout the within the description will help your video be found by the people that are looking for that type of information. Once you upload a video, YouTube is going to pull three random thumbnails images. So these are essentially just little screenshots from the video. Those thumbnail screenshots may not be the, the things that you want to represent your video when someone's looking at it and thinking about whether or not they're going to click on it and watch. You can then upload custom thumbnails, go back to, as I mentioned earlier, canva.com, and you can create custom YouTube thumbnails that are already sized for this space, and you can design ones that create a really consistent, custom look and feel for your YouTube channel. If this video is going to be part of a playlist, you choose that here, and then you choose the audience that this video was made for, whether it's made for kids or not. YouTube does have, have some restrictions about, about the kids audience, so make sure that you click on the, it is made for kids if it is, so that you can be in compliance with YouTube's regulations. From here, you're going to click on next and move to this optional step of adding in some additional video elements. These are really cool, but they are optional. You can add in end screens, which are screens that show up or a screen that shows up at the end of the video or cards, which are uh, links that show up in the uh, course of the video, wherever you wish to put them. End screens can be added to any video that's at least 25 seconds long and be put at the end of the video for the last 5 to 20 seconds. Cards are a little bit more interactive. They're going to be inserted throughout the run of the video wherever you wish to have them. Those could be things like polls or other videos you want them to watch. End screens could be things like uh, playlists you want them to look at or a 
call to action to subscribe to your YouTube channel. These are optional. You can choose whether to add one here or not, and then move to the visibility stage. This visibility step is choosing the audience that you wish to see your video. You can either choose to publish this video to the general public, which means that anybody on YouTube can find your video through a search as well as see your video. You may also choose to make your video only available to people who have the video link and therefore it's not going to be available through a YouTube search and that would be the unlisted visibility type or if you wish to have your video be private and only viewable by people that you choose you can choose that option as well. These visibility uh, options are applied to playlists as well as to individual videos. Once you're ready, you can click on schedule to then schedule your video for when you wish that to be public. Now it's time for you to share the video you made, whether it's a quick video to, uh, to talk about your how to make a, a cake or a video testimonial about your customers. You want people to see this video. Here's where you can share either through social sharing or by copying the video link and sharing that across your website, within emails, and wherever else you wish to share. You also want to share your overall YouTube channel. It's great. People could find your YouTube channel by first seeing one of your videos, or they may discover your channel and then watch some of your videos. You never know how somebody is going to first connect to you on YouTube. But once you have a YouTube channel, as much as you're promoting each individual video you make, you want to promote the overall channel across social media within your email marketing strategy on your website and in your blog posts. When you get people to subscribe to your channel, they're then going to be uh, let known either in the subscription feed or through notifications whenever you publish new content. Once you have some content up there and you have interactions with those videos, you can check out YouTube analytics, which will tell you uh, how your video is doing. It will give you information on uh, what's holding people's attention and what might not be. You can also monitor the performance of your channel and then keep all of your videos uh, as fresh as you, they can be by seeing what's working and what's not. Next, let's talk about how to promote your overall business using video. You've got some great concepts that you can create through organic videos that you're going to put on your channel. But you can also promote your business with video through YouTube advertising. To check out YouTube ads, you can go to youtube.com forward slash ads and explore all of the advertising options that are available to you. YouTube ads help you connect with the people that matter to you. So you can get your ads in front of the people um, and target the right people that you wish to see those in each particular ad. You're only going to pay when someone watches your video ads, so you don't need to worry about, oh, man, everyone's going to just watch this and see this, and then I'm going to get charged for a bunch of people that actually aren't within my target audience. You are only going to pay when someone watches that ad. And then, of course, you can check out all of your real-time insights and your analytics on your ads to see how your ads are performing and how people are responding to them. Here's an example of some of the ad types that we have. And there are formats for all attention spans. There are bite-sized ads that are six seconds or under that are for people who have really short attention spans or for the kind of content that may work for that shorter style video ad. There's also snack size ads that are 15 to 20 seconds uh, long that maybe uh, have a little bit more information included. And then there's the bigger size ads that are 30 seconds or longer that may be a longer commercial, longer type of ad for people that include more information and for people who have a larger attention span or a little bit more invested maybe in your brand at this stage. There are many ad formats that fit one of these uh, attention spans and that are appropriate for your audience.
Here are a couple types of ads just to give you a sense. There are bumper ads, which are six seconds or less. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, what kind, what kind of information can you actually share within six seconds? Now, if you actually sit down and count six seconds out, there's actually quite a bit that you could share within that time period. Um, what's interesting is that nine and 10 people can recall these types of ads in the content. So they can be really powerful. And a best practice is to use bumper ads to remarket to viewers who watched one of your skippable ads. So maybe they watched an ad before, they're already familiarized with your brand, and you then put these types of bumper ads in front of those audiences to give them another taste of your brand and to refresh them with that information that you're there and they can connect to you. Another type of ad that you're probably all pretty familiar with are true view ads. True view ads will let the viewer skip this ad after five seconds. So your job as the video ad creator is to make that first five seconds really compelling. You wanna make sure that the brand name shows within that first five seconds and use that first five seconds to really grab your viewer's attention. It's that hook that we talked about earlier. You as the advertiser won't have to pay for any of the views unless people watch for at least 30 seconds or to the end of the ad. So you don't need to worry about people and, and having to pay for these ads if people decide to click them or not watch up to 30 seconds. Now we talked all about your channel and custom, creating and customizing one, creating awesome videos, making sure that you're creating a channel and when you upload videos that those are designed to attract the viewers that you want and other techniques through YouTube advertising to get your business in front of the people that you want to see and learn about your business. Now let's talk about how to do live stream video with YouTube Live. YouTube Live allows you to get in front of your viewers and get in front of the people that matter to your business in a live video fashion. It's an easy way for you to reach your audience in real time. But just because this is live video and you're streaming live doesn't mean that you just jump on spontaneously whenever you wish. You do still want to have a plan. Make sure that you still go through those steps that we talked about earlier of creating a video concept, creating an outline, and sticking to that throughout the live video. Now, it doesn't mean you won't go off in different directions at certain times if it's just really rich and awesome material that you are recording and the live experience is awesome, but do make sure you always come back to what you were uh, planning to convey and come back to the script uh, to just get you back on track. You can do YouTube Lives through your desktop, laptop, computer, through your webcam, and you can also live stream from your mobile device if your channel has at least a thousand subscribers. Your stream could appear in YouTube search results if you've made that a public live stream, but you can also choose to make it unlisted or private, just like you can designate for each of your other pre-recorded videos and for your playlists. No matter what type of business you have, you can benefit from YouTube Lives by uh, potentially streaming live events. You could also do fun things like expert interviews, talking with customers, learning from other people and the other experts that are connected to your industry. You could do live Q&A or FAQ sessions that give people information on who you are, uh, what's the most important questions that you can answer and that you normally get. Maybe you do a live stream about a new product demo or launch that people haven't been anticipating and are excited about. Whatever you decide to do for your live stream, you, are, you, you do need to make sure that you enable YouTube Live at least 24 hours in advance of the very first live stream that you do. You only need to do this once, but make sure that you enable live streaming at least 24 hours in advance of that very first YouTube Live.
you go to studio.youtube.com, which is YouTube Studio, and then click on the Go Live icon. You'll then follow the steps to verify your account and enable live streaming. Once you are ready to go live, this is the, the day and the time that you've told your subscribers and you've told the general public and you've marketed to them, hey, we're going live on this day, this time. Once you're ready to do it, you will open up your YouTube account, click on the YouTube uh, create button, which again is that movie camera with the plus symbol in it and choose the option go live. From here, you're then going to name the video stream choose the audience you wish to see the live stream again public unlisted or private and there is an option to schedule for later so if you wanted to do this in advance of the actual live stream time you could then choose the option or toggle that button that says schedule for later but if you're ready to go and you are at the time of your live stream you will then click on next and then get ready because your webcam is going to take a picture of you and that picture is going to become the thumbnail image for your live stream that day now we've talked about a lot of information as it as it pertains to video marketing and becoming successful on youtube the first thing you're going to want to do after you close out of today's webinar is to go and create your youtube channel make sure that you customize that channel and uh, create that video trailer as soon as you know what your channel is going to be about and then once you have that channel designed and created, start to work on your video concepts. What can you share? It may be that you want to share the origin stories of your brand. Maybe you want to create a series of videos around how your products work, or you're going to create a series of customer testimonial videos. Whatever the content's going to be, start with creating at least one video and then uploading that to your YouTube channel. Once you upload, remember to add in descriptions that are going to be uh, what users and viewers are searching for that include content that they might be looking for and want information on within your videos. Next, you're going to, of course, explore additional resources because I can't make you a video marketing expert in under an hour, but you can make yourself one by checking out these additional resources that I have for you today. For those of you who are interested in working with one of YouTube's creative partners, you can check out the YouTube creative partners at youtube.com forward slash ads forward slash making dash a dash video dash ad. I'll leave this slide up for just a sec so you can jot this URL down. The creative partners of YouTube can help you create stunning videos, whether that's from your existing video content or even from still images and photos. Here, there are also application or, or uh, web app partners that are video uh, creation software where you can do it yourself. You can find so much of that here by going to the creative partner site checking out all of the services as well as applications that you can use to create awesome videos. Now you're going to want to learn more as well about how to become an amazing video marketer and that's where YouTube Creator Academy comes in. YouTube Creator Academy will give you personalized recommended just for you lessons depending on where you're at within your channel. You'll also be able to explore all of the courses that are available through Creator Academy to help you with your content strategy, production needs, as well as just monetizing your videos and so much more. Check out Creator Academy at creatoracademy.youtube.com. For those of you who are interested in learning business and marketing lessons on the fly, download Google Primer to your mobile device. These are quick and easy lessons whenever you have a few minutes to learn about business and marketing best practices. You can check that out and get that for your phone mobile device, either from the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. 
if you are interested in learning about Google's professional tools in a more in-depth way, then check out Skillshop. Skillshop will help you master Google tools. And if you're interested in following a pathway to certification, that's available for you as well. You can go to g.co forward slash 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 Skillshop for that. If any of you have retail aspects to your website, you sell some product on your site, or you have a full-blown e-commerce site, check out Grow My Store. Grow My Store will do a, a quick and easy evaluation of the retail aspects of your site and tell you what you could do better. Go to g.co forward slash Grow My Store to check that out. And of course, YouTube and, and Google are going, it's going to have a YouTube channel. So Grow With Google has a YouTube channel to help you with quick help videos that teach you about Google tools. There you'll be able to find all of the answers to your questions around the use of Google tools for your business and learn about new features as they are developed and released. You can check out that YouTube channel at g.co forward slash grow forward slash quick help. Lastly, this program is brought to you from Grow With Google, so you can check out more about Grow With Google at google.com forward slash grow. This will give you information on the Grow With Google program, as well as the training, the resources, and everything that's available to you through Grow With Google. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Leticia Corona from the California Office of the Small Business Advocate, Oh, actually, sorry, before we get to Leticia, let's get to some questions. I'm sure you have some. So I'm going to jump into the Q&A area and see what kind of questions that we have. Uh, all right. And I'm sure some of the Googlers have been answering your questions along the way. If by chance we don't get to your question uh, today, then uh, I would recommend Googling it. I promise you, you will find the answer. But let's get to some of these questions here. Uh, someone's asking for live stream videos. Is there a subscriber requirement? Um, so no, the answer is, um, there is no uh, subscriber option for live streams from your computer, but you do need to, as I mentioned earlier, have at least a thousand subscribers to your YouTube channel in order to live stream from your mobile device. So again, no, no subscriber requirement if you are going to live stream from your actual desktop or laptop, but a 1000 subscriber uh, uh, requirement if you want to live stream from your mobile device. Thanks so much for that question. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, uh, someone's asking, can the description be changed later on? So um, I'm assuming you mean the description of your video. And uh, yes, you can update and edit that description. Uh, no problem. And let's see, uh, a lot of people are asking, what was the website I mentioned to get channel art? And that is canva.com. That's C A N. VA.com, canva.com. It's an amazing platform for those non graphic designers like me who want to look like they're graphic designers. So you can create beautiful graphics that are already pre sized for the different things that you may need them for. So, YouTube channel art, for example, has a specific set of dimensions that work best for that uh, you that channel art space and it's the same thing for the um, thumbnail uh, images for your YouTube videos there's an, a pre-designed uh, there's a series or a whole collection of templates for YouTube channel art for YouTube thumbnails you just pick one of those templates and then you can completely customize it for the look and feel that you want to convey or to express your channel, your brand. Now, when it comes to uh, your channel and your brand, it may not be exactly as your brand um, as it exists, but it's going to look and feel like your brand and then have maybe something special that makes it interesting to, uh, to designate that, you know, these are your, this is your YouTube channel and these are your YouTube videos. So oftentimes the channel art and the thumbnail videos won't just be an image. It will also be text overlays, words over, those images in a fun, splashy, or interesting way. 
Uh, all right. Um, someone's asking whether or not uh, this is going to be recorded. And yes, this is recorded and it will be available for you on the California Office of Small, the Small Business Advocates website for you to review the information and uh, hopefully make you as successful a YouTube marketer you can be. I, I do highly urge you to go check out YouTube's Creator Academy and that's where you're going to get much uh, deeper dive lessons and everything that we've covered today today and more. All right, I'm just spinning through these questions, seeing if there's any more. And, and just a clarification on that graphic design website. It is Canva with a V, V as in Victor, not Canva or Canda. Uh, so it's C-A-N-V as in Victor, A dot com. Awesome. Thank you for that clarification question. I want to make sure everyone checks that out there. It's, it's free to use. I've used it for years and years. And, and, and there's certainly a, a pay option if you wish to go premium with them, but you don't have to. All right. Just taking a look here, making sure that I've addressed all the questions that I have here. Let me take a look back. All right, awesome. Well, it doesn't look like I have any other questions to answer at this stage. I hope that means that you came, you got exactly what you were looking for, you got a ton of information and also inspiration for you to uh, dive in and just start doing this. Just because you only have a smartphone or because you're a one person solopreneur business, you can do this, I promise you. And I hope that today's webinar and the information I've shared inspires you to go ahead and create beautiful video content for your business. Now, without further ado, I would love to introduce Leticia Corona from the Office of the Small Business Advocate, who is going to come and tell, uh, tell you a little bit more about what the office does and how they can help. Leticia. Yes, thank you so much, Carissa. As mentioned, I'm Leticia Corona with the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. I hope you enjoy this great training and we'll also take that time to listen to the other three recordings we do have one in spanish so for those spanish speakers please take advantage um disponible en español we are excited um, to continue offering small businesses online resources and training via our get digital california so this is the first of many other digital trainings and resources that you'll be able to access so please stay tuned um here you'll see in our um, slide there's various resources that we want to offer you on your small businesses, as well as entrepreneurs in the state of California. You can definitely follow us and continue seeing our digital support here on business.ca.gov slash get digital CA. I also advise folks um, if you have your phone handy or take a screenshot or photo, because these are valuable resources available for you. Also, it's very important um, to follow guidelines and as small businesses are opening in different counties and cities, this is a great resources to follow um, when your business will be able to open properly. And that's, again, the blueprint for a safer economy. Also, additional resources are available here on our website for Shop Safe Shop Local, which is business.ca.gov slash shop safe shop local, which we highly recommend for other free or low cost resources that are available for you to continue increasing your digital footprint. Lastly, um, we really encourage folks to stay connected and also be able to access other centers near you for free technical assistance and also be able to access um, resources and guidance on capital. So once again, that's business.ca.gov slash centers to connect with the nearest center um, in your neighborhood and your community. Also, please follow us. We're here on Twitter and Facebook at California OSBA. Please stay connected, um, send us a, a message or an email as well too. And finally, a huge thank you to our local and regional partners um, listed here on this slide. And once again, thank you to all small businesses for joining us, not just for this training, but for the other ones as well too. Muchas gracias, thank you, and please stay connected and take care, thank you.